one, right? So I won't put my name outside. Like, right. So how can we control the R0 or R1? Yeah, you're probably fascinated about that. So like amazingly fascinating. Uh, R0, yeah. Uh, all right, so we'll need to actually jump into a pop instruction. We'll do uh, return-oriented programming. There have been several return-oriented programming in uh, Black Hat uh, this year, and I think in DEF CON also. Uh, very interesting. You can put that with this attack and do some more complex attacks. Uh, you can do actually whatever you want with that. So we'll need to jump into a pop instruction, uh, which also pops the PC, or we can control it later. Uh, and we can control the R0 or maybe more, all right? So I just looked uh, like a quick regular expression on uh, libc. And you can see like, LDM is like pop in uh, in Intel. It's similar. To, I don't want to get into details. What's difference? Uh, but you can see it's it's popping R0 and R1. So if we jump right here, this address, uh, we'll be able to pop R0 and R1. We'll put any values that we want in there. Also, you can see the stack pointer is lifting itself by 12 bytes. So there will be actually R0, R1 and extra four bytes, and then you can see pop PC. So we get four bytes of junk. So what we want to do after the buffer, we got AAAs, uh, R4, R11, it well, it depends how it's compiled. And then we'll be jumping, actually it's a mistake here, it's uh, not 44, it's 48. So we'll be jumping here to the LDM instruction, and then we'll pop R0, we'll put it inside uh, the slash bin slash sh address, R1 is not really matter for that one, but it's just four bytes. Uh, and then we got four bytes of junk. It, it doesn't really matter what you put there. And then we'll call system. So that's the original idea of how you can control the, the R0 and R1 instructions. But that's only good for uh, local attackers. So let's, we can do some more complex uh, return oriented programming uh, payloads, but let's just keep it that way in the system function. It's very easy. Uh, so if we can control R0 to point to a relative path to be in the beginning of our buffer, we can actually put any command. Let's say we want to put like netcat with reverse shell. We can do that if R0 is pointing to the beginning of our buffer. Uh, so what we need in this one is actually to have like R0 to point to the relative color to the beginning of the path uh, and then we'll call system. But like I said before, we, ne we need the, the size of the buffer to be a certain type. So it will not work because it's for short buffer, we only get D words of unwritten commands. Uh, for long buffer, we get none. So that's not enough. We have to stack lift. So that's another uh, thing in our attack we need to remember. Sometimes we just got to stack lift ourselves in order to execute the full payload without being controlled by, by the lack of the creators of uh, libc. Uh, and the one who compiled it. So ARM commands are actually very easy, very nice for exploitation. There are several variations of the same stuff. Uh, you can do many instructions. It's much more uh, better than x86 in my opinion. So let's see what we can do in that one. We can abuse the current stack pointer. Uh, we can just lift ourselves and uh, and then just go back, all right? So let's, just a quick look, the wprintf function, epilogue, you can see that you can pop LR. If we jump right here, we'll jump right here. And then the SP adds to itself uh, 16 bytes. And then uh, the next instruction will be bxlr. bx means branch with, uh, it checks the first bit, but in, in this case, just say it's like a, a call, uh, advanced call. So like a x86 advanced call. So we'll get our stack lifted by 16 bytes just by coming to that one. And then we'll put a new instruction right here where we want to jump next time. So we can jump again and again and again and lift our stack. We only need to lift our stack uh, 384 bytes so the system will not override ourselves and we can execute whatever payload we want. So if we do that, our payload will look like something like that. 
like netcat, reverse shell, and uh, that one is actually very important because it ignores the rest of the command until a night a null byte, and uh, then we'll overwrite the function and just go back and forth, back and forth until we lifted enough of the stack uh, and execute, and, and then we, when we finish, we'll just go uh, to our zero adjustment. Maybe that was a better idea to just put it right here, but anyway, uh, we'll go to our zero adjustment again, our one adjustment, four bytes of junk, and then we'll call system. And we can execute whatever we want, whatever size we want of the buffer. So, another interesting uh, uh, parts to adjust parameters will be, uh, I just seen it at, on M count epilog. You can see you can pop any, uh, we're R0 to R3, whatever you want, and R11, LR, and then you branch to LR. So you can pop and adjust multiple parameters in the same jump, in the same return oriented, uh, in the same widget uh, of this one. Uh, what we want to do next would be, uh, as a remote attackers, would be actually to uh, enable the stack and execute whatever we want. Uh, that can be easily done uh, by calling and protect and changing the uh, our our place in the memory to be executable, and then we'll have to jump on it. There is a good uh, section of that on Perk Magazine, on the alphanumeric ARM shell codes. So, oh, uh, yeah. All right. So yesterday I was very bored. It was like 3 a.m. and uh, well, that's the Android device I'm going to uh, demo on that one. Actually, we went pretty fast. Uh, well, it's cool. So let's see if we can get a shell out of Android application. Uh, there are several limitations on uh, on Android devices. Uh, first of all, you don't want it to be a, like a Dalvik application. You want it to be a native uh, Android application, for instance, uh, something that had been compiled with NDK. NDK is the native uh, development kit for uh, Android. And uh, well, it's actually pretty hard to compile uh, dynamically. There's lots of tutorials in the internet, but it took some time. It's it's not user friendly. And also, Android libc had been compiled differently. Uh, the bin sh is actually nothing in in Android. There is slash system slash bin sh. They recompiled their libc, uh, and they did. I, I don't know if they did it by mistake or. Uh, by luck, but like by mistake or they really meant to do it. But libc uh, of Android is much more harder to exploit because it has no uh, pop r0 instructions and stuff like that. So you have to be a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit m more complicated to do that. But it's it's the same technique, so it works on every ARM architecture. So we don't get uh, things uh, on R0 immediately, but we'll, we can do that. And the slash BNSH is uh, actually on a different path. But uh, for instance, this, the system function is, is being implemented that it executes uh, exec VE function uh, with the full path of the BNSH in regular libc. So it has to, to do that here also, so they just modify the the variable and they just put slash b system slash bnsh. So that string should also be in the same uh, library. So we're cool with that. All right. So don't worry. Uh, it's all the same uh, also here in Android. Uh, we'll get the slash system bnsh to r0 and we'll not pop r0, but we'll do a trick to do that. As you can see that, I, I hope that some people can see the trick here. Uh, I'll give you like 10 seconds to think about it before I say what it is. Uh, it's it's the mal info function, just function in uh, Android libc that I took from uh, that one, and you can see that you can pop to that. That's a pop instruction if you're not familiar with uh, ARM uh, architecture. Uh, so you can actually pop to R4 and get the PC back. So let's do that. We'll pop to R4 instruction so we can control the R4 uh, register. 
That's the first step we want to do. So after we control the R4 register and we control the PC, which means the next instruction, we might want to go here. So we just control the R4 instruction and then we move the R4 to R0. And then we can put some more four bytes of junk on R4 and we can go to system. So our payload will look like that. If that's if that thing is uh the LDM MFD uh R4, we'll just put the slash system slash bin sh address in R4 and then we'll jump like you can see it's four bytes uh offset between that one. So we'll just jump to the first instruction uh and that will move the R4 to R0 and then we can put some more four bytes of junk that will be on uh the next R4, the, the second phase of this attack and then we'll go to system. So well I'm quite, I did it too hairy. I, I was too hairy to do the conversation. So let's show the demo then. So what I did here uh, was actually compiling, uh, yeah you can read it, uh, a native application for uh, Android, just to run C application on Android. What it do is uh, just calling a vulnerable function uh, that's after the function. So you're not supposed to see that if the payload that succeeded or uh, the program had crashed because after the function we'd get a segmentation fault. So we go to the stack o, uh, which means stack overflow and we got two, two buffers, a small buffer and a big buffer. Uh, what we do is actually read from uh, that place slash SD card slash buffer and uh, we'll just put the stuff in it uh, on the small buffer via memcpy. I use memcpy because there is actually, I think there was a null in uh, one of the parameters. So they were lucky on this version but it was an honest mistake by them I think. Uh, so I, I used memcpy to, to copy the buffer to the small buffer. Small buffer is 16 bytes and the big buffer is, uh, I don't know, 256. So what, what should happen if we succeed in this one is actually getting a, a shell. I, I put a, my shell code is uh, on, on that place and it has the same technique I described here. So what we're going to do is put AAAs and then we're going to adjust the R4. We're going to jump again. Uh, we're going to adjust the R4 with slash system slash bin sh. We're going to jump again to uh, the move instruction. So the R0 will contain, so the R0 will contain our, uh, our uh, parameter and then we'll jump back and do the system. All right, so let's do it. That's this device right here. It's the G1, I think. The only Android device I had on my desk. Let me find it. I was a bit drunk yesterday. Uh, no, not really. Um. All right. So that's our function. That's our uh, binary. Uh, it has the same technique. It's, it's just the C code that you just saw earlier. Uh, it was a nightmare to compile it on uh, Android. But here we go. I'm going to execute it and we're going to get a shell. So we got our shell, like you can see. And if you can see what executed is the buff one executed a shell that executed a shell. Uh, so we made it. We won. And 